Hey bodies, welcome to Mass Games. My name is Simon. Today I'm bringing my top 100 games of all time. This has been updated for the month of December 2021. It's the middle of December as I'm recording this. This is 53 to 1. Hopefully you enjoy this. Please, of course, let me know in the comments what you think. Of course, check out the description for more information, including supporting via Patreon and, of course, Instagram to follow over 2,200 photos. We're in at 50. We've talked about this briefly in that 51 to 100. And here we go. It is Dominion, this game, which is a deck building game. I believe I think it was the first deck building game. I'm still very much impressed with it. Love the game. Played lots of expansions. Enjoy playing them too, including mixing them together. So this is by Dominic, uh, sorry, Donald X. Baccarino. Up next, we have a promo. So this particular list, as per the 151, I did talk about this, does include opportunities whereby I think sometimes playing either the promo, an expansion, a mini expansion, or something else, maybe a re-implementation, I might prefer over the original. In this particular game, you of course can play that base 72 or so Dixit cards, but in this particular one, I think there's quite a lot going in with it. Obviously, you've got a little mounds, you could say it's underwater mountains, caverns, terrains, obviously got loads of different things going on in this picture. And this particular card is worth about £30, apparently, which is more than the game, or more than I paid for it. And yeah, it's got this dragon, it's called the Dragon Primer, I think it's our origins that we can get this from. Pirate flag, loads of stuff going on with it, which could be good, could be bad, depending on what you're after. Up next, we have Architects of the West Kingdom. That's by Garfield Games. I've played it quite a few times now. I think I have played it asymmetrically, and I'm keen to yeah, try out the, uh, the Tome Saga sort of trilogy expansion, whereby you can kind of combine and play them all through all the games in the West Kingdom series. So yeah, for this game, um, I think I did rate higher initially. It was my second highest rated game of 2018. It's dropped a bit, but by all means, it's still very enjoyable. And I've even gone for the stone strategy I made up, whereby I had over 50 stone, and I still only lost by a point or two. Up next, we have Unlock Mystery Adventures. This particular one is called The House on the Hill. It's the very first unlock I played. Very much enjoyed it, and I think it holds a special place for me. So this one of the first unlocks there were, and I'll be talking about more unlocks. There were some other unlocks talked about in 51 through to 100. And I did say before that, of course, I could choose to have just a single game representing on this list, for example, Unlock. But then, of course, you might then pick one which I might not like, and in fact, other people might not like it too much as well. And that's why I think it has special place to definitely choose individual ones. Equally, I could have chosen just one game from those West Kingdom games, but it's an individual entry and hence on this list. Of course, please like and share. Up next, we have Undo. So again, there's a series of Undo games. I've played seven or eight of them so far. Another one I'm going to get in about February time of 2022. This is Blood in the Gut. It's the second one, uh, although one of the first three that came out after the Cherry Blossom Festival. And yes, this is Weaving Fates New, whereby you're trying to undo someone's fate. And as I mentioned in a prior video, yes, you don't want to just say what you think they're going to do, because of course, that's what they were going to do anyway. It's their fate. So how on earth can you discover and think where else you want to go? It's a bit of a... Not a controversial one, but definitely some people might not like this because uh, how can you, of course, foresee what they're saying? But it's very much role playing and you just have to get into the minds of how these people designed it and play test it and gone with it that way. Up next, Great Western Trail. Yep, since acquired this game, I've played numerous versions of it. And uh, this isn't the Edgar Spiel one that I have. And yes, there is a second edition, which doesn't really do much for me in terms of the look. Uh, that guy on the right does look very sinister, though, <laughs> that Baron. That, uh, that uh, yeah, railway tycoon. And um, yeah, in this particular game, yes, you are having this kind of rondelle effect whereby you're getting cows, you're selling the cows, trying to get different kinds of cows, and yeah, trying to then build out places where you're going to. It has a kind of a Kalis vibe to it as well by Alexander Pfister. Up next, we've talked about time stories in this list already. This is the Marcy case, the second case I played, the second case there is. And yes, of course, there is a cassette without the case. And yeah, it's very nice, 9 times 2 setting, quite cool. And yeah, I won't say any more because, of course, it would be spoiler territory. Up next, Reiner Knizia's Axio. We've talked about Dr. Reiner Knizia already. As I've already mentioned, I have, of course, played with his assistant's son. So this is a game which is very addictive as a solo game as well. You can see that on the channel as well. I've played it seven times back to back solo. Very nice game. Looking at it initially, doesn't look necessarily great, but very enjoyable. Up next, we have got Turn and Taxis. And this is a game from 2006. It won the Spiel des Jahres Award. Uh, it's popular on Board Game Arena as well. And yeah, it's I've got a fantastic edition of mine. Keen to play it beyond the two. I've only played the two so far. That's, of course, in person. Devon, an only two-player game. This is a combinatorial style game, an abstract strategy game by Chris Brum in the 
uh, GIFs project series, and this particular version is Hutch and Friends. I think mine isn't a Hutch and Friends one. And um, yeah, very much enjoy this game. A very interesting game whereby yeah, you're trying to, you're ultimately reducing space on the board, but as you reduce space, you then can't move your pieces as much because they're taller as well. So there's a double effect going on there. Gorgeous to look at, lovely pieces. Kind of lowering a bit for me. Now we talked about Yogi Ready and Yogi Guru. Well, even though Yogi Guru has the wild cards, which I think are fantastic, I think for not having to worry about that and perhaps making a mistake whereby you're making it too hard for someone, I like the fact it just simplifies this to a big degree. Just watch out for the variant you get, because depending where you buy it from, you might end up getting a, a non-English uh, language or wherever you're from. Now, next up, we have the Legends of Andor. Legends of Andor. So I've played this many times, about 40 odd times, I think 38 now. Uh, yeah, 2013 Kenneth Spielberg Yards winner, Connoisseur's Game of the Year. Uh, this is the Cosmos edition. There was Fantasy Flight, it's now come back to Cosmos. And yes, I've been playing this through a lot, particularly this year. It's been on my 10 by 10. I've completed it, it was the last one to complete on the 2nd of December 2021. And yes, I've been working my way through all the quests to make sure I actually have played them all. I have that final quest to play. I have played all the, the Dark Mages as well. Okay, very look forward to playing the promo and, of course, open that second expansion, which I've had for four years now. Up next, um, unlock uh, Mystery of the House on the Hill. I do apologise. You've already got this one in the list. No idea why it's again here. I think it's because we're talking about the group. So the Mystery Adventures itself, which we'll just quickly come out of this mode for a second and go to. So we did talk about Mystery Adventures. Uh, Adventures. It is part of that set. And in particular, let's just talk about Mystery Adventures. This was definitely higher because, of course, this was my favourite of the lot. Mystery Adventures, this is how you use Board Game Geek, you just search using kinetic scrolling, unlock Mystery Adventures, and here we go. So there's some other cases on here too, which we'll talk about again, we have Nautilus Traps on here, very much enjoy it as per that very high rating. Up next, we have Rise of Augustus, now this has been re-implemented online in particular, you can play on Board Game Arena, I don't recommend that version as much, just play Paolo Mori's Rise of Augustus, a fantastic bingo-like game, without it being too bingo-like other than just drawing stuff out of a bag. Excellent game, 30-odd minutes, uh, lovely print. Unfortunately, they fell out with Hurricane, and therefore all the kind of potential expansions that they were hinting at based on certain pieces in the game, which was a bit, a bit annoying, a bit arrogant in a way to do that. Yeah, that didn't fully happen. So there we are, that is Rise of Augustus. Big box, not too many pieces in it. Next up, Pandemic Iberia. So this is says limited edition or limited collector's edition. This particular one holds you building out railways and you're trying to go out place and do stuff. Uh, I think going out building railways in case you're going to place don't need to go uh, doesn't make much sense. But I do like kind of route building elements to a game, including another game I might be talking about. OK, up next we have Santa de Bingo. This is by Stephen Rishaus, a re-implementation of Bisbee. This is in the Port Royal World family weight game and this is a game where you simultaneously draw one to eight cards and when you play out that card you're doing its effect anyone else has the same effect then you're not going to benefit as much and yes you're all going to choose to take cards back at different times because you might want to get ahead of somebody else lovely artwork by Clements Franz up next we have unlock exotic adventures this is all three of them I'm talking about right now so we've talked about Shizarazar's tail got this lovely dinosaur one here and of course, uh, that scary looking one on the top left, which I do recall was yeah, a little bit scary. Very cool. OK, up next, we have Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. We talked about Jack the Ripper. There's that first 10 cases. It won in 1983, I believe. Spielder's Yards, of course, the award for the most easy to play, easy to teach, replayable game and family weight. Well, I must admit, none of those things really apply to this one because it's not necessarily easy to teach. I don't necessarily call it family weight. I definitely opt to Jack the Ripper ones. It's also not um, not short, we're normally able to be 20 to 60 minutes, it's definitely beyond that, typically, but there's no kind of timer on it. And lastly, I wouldn't say it's very replayable, because once you've played it, you kind of know it, at least to a degree. Next up, we have Timeless Adventures. Now, for some reason, it's a small image, but yeah, Timeless Adventures, so this is one of the high-rated ones on there. I know someone else who's just picked this one up, involving time travel, I think it's Tom Vassell's favourite. And yes, it has, I think, Lupin in the centre there, with the nose tied. I don't know, I'm, I'm still not, I still feel as it's very much like um, Dr. Evil, whatever his name is called, in, of course, uh, Dr. Robotnik in Sonic the Hedgehog. Then we have Eleven Nymphed. So Eleven Nymphed, where Wolfgang Kramer, this is another version of Six Nymphs, but it's called Eleven Nymphed. A lot less chaotic than Six Nymphs. I quite like it a lot. 
it's almost too straightforward, but at the same time, it just works. And yeah, there's a chance obviously to, I don't know, to win all the rest, but enjoy it very much. Same size. Then we've just talked about this in the other one. So this is Unlock the Tonopal's Treasure. The reason why I like it so much, I don't want to spoil it, but the very end of it, the very, very, very end of it, there's more. And um, that's something that lots of people might forget and miss. Very meta, very cool. Um, make sure potentially, you don't have to, you'll definitely want to play all three of those first boxes. And I don't just mean three individual ones, I mean the first three sets of boxes. So you want to play all of those ones to uh, maybe then play on with this one too. So this is from Mystery Adventures, you want to play the other two as well and really enjoy them. And then it's a fantastic thing at the very end. Next up, we have Ticket to Ride. So we talked about quite a few Ticket Rides, a lot of Ticket Rides on this list. I don't know how many are on here. And I won't spoil it by putting that in the description. But of course, yeah, please do um, sub share, um, share, like I said, subscribe, hit the notification bell for further videos. And of course, check the playlist for top tens, including obviously family weight games such as this. So Ticket to Ride, lovely game. It says about 50 minutes, 60 minutes, but you can play it in maybe 25 if you're quick. And as I say, there's a three. Uh, very nice game. It's obviously just like rummy, setting sets of cards, trying to complete routes. As I said, I do like some bits of routes in the game. Next up, Splendor. So this is a cool engine building game, very light, very straightforward, although it can be a bit crunchy initially, at least it felt for me to get the grips of it. Gorgeous art and pieces, lovely game, and you can knock this out in about 15 minutes as well, especially as a two. It can get very tight as well, and there's loads of strategies on it. I try not to think about it too much just because you can easily get it wrong for a start. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend you just, just discover it yourself. It's very clever by Mark Andre, the Space Cowboys. Next up, we have a pack of gum games, my highest rated Chris Handy game, I believe. This is called Lie, Reimplementation of Lies Dice. It's a bluffing game, two to six players, two to using cards rather than dice, which does make it a bit more strategic, I think I'd say, and that's why I prefer it over Lies Dice. That is on this list, of course, that was higher up. And there we are, lovely tiny packet games to bring around the size of Wrigley's Sugar Free Gum, let's say. Next up, Visitors from the Rhine Valley, or Visit from the Rhine Valley. This is for Viticulture, so you can play it for the Essential Edition, or yeah, just play the Essential Edition. And this is by Stomar Games. This, I, what I like about this game is finally you do not get penalised for the luck element that you get with the grapes. The biggest mistake and biggest problem I have with Viticulture, as great as it is, is that luck element. Also, and this goes for all of Viticulture, I have won the game never making any wine. And that's the other really bizarre thing, really breaks the theme for people as well. But Visit Vine Valley is really nice, whereby you can gain points and other people can gain points or whatever they want to do. It's just a lot more enjoyable, and I'll only ever play this with that if I have the choice. Next up, we have another unlock. We have Secret Adventures Tombstone Express. I talked about Secret Adventures already. So as I mentioned with Tombstone Express, you are playing a bit of poker in this game. It's very cool, very nice, and I really like the element, and it felt quite diverse as well. It looks like maybe there's a card 71 to take. Any takers on that? Then we have Crosstalk. So Crosstalk is very much like Codenames, whereby even though it's quite Americanized, you are looking to ultimately decide what on earth that other person on your team is saying before the other team will work that out first because they get first dibs to work it out. But you've given a secret clue to your team as well. I think it's really cool. Uh, the only downside is it's a bit Americanized. You can use a die to choose which number you want to pick, but instead just pick the one that hopefully you're both familiar with and of course your team are too. Now with code names, you also have that element of do they know the other word, but it's in a way it's more straightforward because you need to pick a word that they know. Equally, you need to assume they know that word too. Then we have Wizard Jubilee Edition. Now this is actually the 25th anniversary edition image, uh, not the standard one. Of course, check my video out on the channel for this. Jubilee Edition has a bit more stuff whereby you create the lowest card or the highest card, but therefore if you play the highest card and then the lowest card comes up, it's no longer the highest card if you play the dragon, which is the highest card. So it's a really nice way of actually saying, ha, I can be any card and then I can still trump that as well. So there's a very nice element to it too. Those particular cards work fantastically well as the paranoia sinks in. Then we have codenames, we just talked about that. Obviously it's a cooperative game. You do need obviously a party element, you need a team, just like Crosstalk. And you do need um, at least two players, unlike Crosstalk, we need four. So you could play it as a two and that's fine too. But um, I've got more interest you at playing as a two now. Then up we have Port Royal, The Adventure Begins. Now I do have the German one here, that is the version I have. And yes, it's a cooperative game, a campaign game. I've only played it two player, I haven't played it solo yet, whereby, yeah, you're looking to complete certain missions and a set of cards and uh, time to, yes, win the game. 
But up, we have Azul. So this is a game whereby it's an abstract strategy game, very high rated, I've met the designer, gorgeous to look at. I have played um, the other two in the series, I haven't played the most recent one, which doesn't come out in the UK at least until I think about February time. Not officially. The next up we have Dizzle. Yeah, as you can see the image isn't very good there, so just check my video out on the channel for that instead. And yeah, this has lots of different cool stuff in Dizzle, this roll and write game, or roll place and then write whereby, yeah, there are volcanoes and there's spaceships and planets and stuff like that. And funnily enough, there is now regular Dizzle, which is an even better image. So in this case, yeah, you're looking to play jigsaw puzzles and connect them up. And whilst I'm not against five to eight, I just think it's an easy intro. So I highly recommend both. And as you can see, I'd rather play Dizzle five to eight over, say, Visit from the Rhine Valley. That's what this list is all about, because I can happily pop in another 30 games if you want. Of course, I have done a top 250 before. Then we have Hand to Tonica, another game, and I've still got my edition of this with all my expansions, which I'm still keen to try out and play. It's just a lovely game whereby it is a Euro game, it's a bit crunchy, it's combinatorial, I would say as well, to an effect. And uh, yeah, there's very little against it, I can say. I think people who like games which aren't necessarily solvable, but has a bit of area control, has a bit of engine building, you know, it doesn't take too long to play as well. Which leads me on to Big box. So why would you want this one instead? Well, it has a score pad. I think there's a mistake on the board, which is why I prefer the original over big box. And the original also, uh, yeah, it's got a few extra tokens, which I like too. So I've put everything into it and it takes actually less space than the big box. Next up, Aeon Zen Outcast, most recent release aside from the, uh, the ones coming soon from Kickstarter. This is, I think, wave five, so AE5. This is Aeons and Outcast, whereby there's a story element, and it's part of a new, uh, a new storyline process and innovative um, elements to Aeons End. It's a lovely game, a cooperative game, whereby of course you have new beasts to defeat, including this guy who looks like he's from Independence Day. Then up, we have another Pandemic. We have Pandemic's Legacy Season Zero. I love playing this in and out of lockdown, uh, or either side of lockdown. Uh, lovely story, very cool theme, very cool narrative as well. Very cool ways in which you're deciding what to do. Really, really love this one. And then we have Aeons and Gen. So we have Legacy. Why is this better? Well, you we get to improve, you get to change your own characters, create your own characters, um, fantastic surprises, really close. I mean, between the two of them, of course, there's not much in it, but the Legacy is brilliant. Then we have Knock Mal. This is Encore. This it happens to be sets four, five, and six. So you've got three different pads playing out this roll and write game with just different maps. And next up, well, I know, yeah, this means I'll rather play this more than, let's say, Pandemic Legacy and all the rest. And that is because, again, this has the green sheet and, again, a very nice pad set for you to choose what to do. And then on for block one, again, the, green, the red set, and again, very nice, played a lot. And finally, block two, again, I like this one a lot. Again, I don't mean to be, it's not cheats, I can easily chuck in another 30 games if you want to see them too. And this particular one, I've risked it and actually gone with individual ones because, again, that's why expansions exist. My average rating for an expansion is 6.29, average rating for a game is 6.31, and therefore it goes to show that some expansions are definitely worth playing over some other games, and that's where I'd rather be with it. Again, you just grab that, so you need the dice, but uh, that's all you need. And then up we have Greedy Greedy Goblins, so this is Richard Garfield's game with a bit of push your luck and a bit of speed element, possibly, you might say. And yes, it's a lovely game, very, very swift. Only negative, or one of the negatives, is the fact it doesn't have, I think, a five value coin. It's a shame. And then at Pandemic Legacy Season 2, I believe it's the highest rated Pandemic I've got in this list. Again, very curious to know how many Pandemics have popped in this top 100. And this game in particular I like just because you are building your own routes as per the back of the box. Very, very cool by Matt Leacock and, of course, the, uh, the godfather of Legacy Games, Rob Davereau. Up next we have Stone Age, lovely game from over 10 years ago now, I believe. This is from this is Stone Age, a smelly cup by Z-Man Games. They did a great job getting hold of this. It's by Michael Tumelhofer, who I think is a maths teacher, who born in the 70s, I think it's in 74, got a couple of kids. Uh, no, that's it. It's a Bernd Brunhofer, here we go. Oh, is it a different name? What's all that about? That's Michael Tumelhofer. That's very odd. I don't know why they've got a different name there. So yeah, lovely game whereby you have dice, you're looking to do set collection, push your luck a bit as well, it just works very effectively. Okay, next up we have got Your Bluffing, and you can get very close scores in uh, 
in Stone Age when you both dial in on playing the game, we're talking 10 points in a 300 plus point game. And as a Kramer track. So you're bluffing, a bluffing game involving set collection and you're just trying to bid as well. So auction and set collection and bluffing. Fantastic. Okay, this is kind of got the game that kind of got me into gaming. Then up we have No Thanks, a prior game at number one, as has been uh, your bluffing. I think this was number one last year. Very straightforward. You have some cards and you have these tiddlywink things and you, of which there are 55, they're different versions of the game. You're looking to play these cards. I don't recommend this version in the picture just because it's not very really pretty to look at. And what you're trying to do, ideally get a smaller box as well, not the bigger ones that are out currently. And yes, you are looking to get ladders. You're trying to get number five with number six and number seven because your total score is only going to be five. But if you've got five and you don't have six and then you've got seven, your score is 12. You want the lowest score possible. My best score is minus six because every tiddlywink or counter you have at the end of the game is worth a negative point as well. So try and get as low as possible. Next up, we have Port Royal, a prior number one game. This is Port Royal. This is that push your luck card game whereby you're trying to get some guy or some kind of cards which are engine builders and help you play out the game. I've played this game in about, in about 12 minutes, at least as a two. It's a lovely game to play, obviously by a lovely artwork by Clements France. Again, Alexander Fisher, the designer of Great Western Trail. And then we have Hey, That's My Fish. I think this has been a prior number one as well. And this is also a number two in the list, I believe now. So we have a sub-zero game of fishy strategy, two to four players, very little theme in this. You can see my theme list of games on the channel, of course. This particular uh, image is from Fancy Flight Games. I have a Fancy Flight box, but I have the Flanx um, Polish wooden uh, penguins, which is much better, I think. It's a lot better to play with. And yeah, it's a bit fiddly set up, but it's very nice to play. And of course, with Fancy Flight, you have smaller pieces as well. And there's even smaller box you can get as well now. And then in at number one, we have Encore or Knock Mal. So I've got the Schmidt Spiel edition. I don't have the Stronghold Games edition. And this is by Ingram Marcus Brandt. So yeah, fantastic designers. They haven't appeared in this top 50 actually. So no other exits have appeared in this top 50. But here we go, originally published in Germany as Knock Mal. Very popular game. Lots of people are really getting into this. Oh, what is that game? Why is it so good? It's just a roll and write, but it's very addictive. The app's great as well whereby you want to try and be the first person to complete a row or a column because you'll get a few more points, try and get the highest points possible. That's all it is, whether you play it solo or otherwise, it's the same rules. Um, very enjoyable, everyone's really studying it. And unlike a game like Quicks, it doesn't necessarily grind towards the end. You just need to think, well, do I want to push my luck and wait? So there you have it. That is that top 100 list is the top 50. And there we go, a place where you can follow on Instagram as well and see loads of pictures. So if you scroll down, loads of different stuff down here, loads of books I've been playing recently, loads of other games I've been playing too. So hopefully you found the video interest and of course some stats on various games I've been playing. As you can see, loads of different stuff going on here. Hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know your thoughts. Of course, loads of videos have been coming out since May, every day this year, in fact. Playing every day as well. Uh, please let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching.